What's going on people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another video today. We're back to basics, man. We're in the car. You know, it all started in the car. My first video, Europa League preview final, was in the car a couple of years ago. We're back here again. Um, as you know, it's half term in the UK at the moment. So I'm on daddy duties at the moment. So I've been unable to live stream. I will be back tomorrow with a live stream. So I thought I'd just do a quick pre-recorded video today just to check in with everyone. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's blessed. We're just going to talk a little bit of Arsenal news now. There was an interesting transfer news that came out yesterday regarding Yuri Tillemans, Leicester centre midfielder. Uh, Rumours that he could be available for as little as £31 million this summer. He'll only have a year left on his contract. Belgian international, we know him well. Um, Leicester City midfielder, he's done really well at Leicester. Um, we was all a little bit annoyed with him the other week when he made that terrible mistake against Spurs that led to them winning that game. Um, but could a former Arsenal great be a key in completing this deal. Now, it's believed, I don't know if this is just hearsay or not, but it's believed that Thierry Henry could try and convince Yuri Tillemans to join Arsenal. Now, of course, Thierry Henry is the assistant manager of the Belgian national team and um, he could obviously try and convince him to join Arsenal this summer. How much of an influence this kind of thing can have on a player, I'm not too sure really. You know, Thierry is somebody that I'm sure you would listen to when he speaks to you, but I don't know if it's going to have that big of an influence on Yuri Tillemans' transfer decision. He's being linked with Liverpool as well. Uh, listen, if Liverpool were to go for him and Arsenal were to go for him, it's going to be very difficult for Arsenal to get him. Um, you know, Liverpool at the moment, one of the best teams in Europe and in the Champions League. But a lot could change depending on what competition Arsenal are in next season. You know, financial implications. Arsenal have got a lot of wages available to them at the moment, obviously with the likes of Aubameyang and Kolasinac who've left the club in January. So we'll have to see on that one. Yuri Tillemans, um, Arsenal are targeting him for this summer, £31 million. I think a lot of Arsenal fans would take him. Let me know in the comments. Would you take Yuri Tillemans, £31 million, or do you have somebody else who um, who you would suggest who would be a better option? Now, another interesting bit of news for Arsenal is um, Gabriel Martinelli has apparently been training as a number nine now. I spoke about this on my last stream a couple of days ago. I think Arsenal have to find an alternative outside of Lacazette and Eddie and Ketia. For me, Lacazette will be the starting striker the majority of the time. But as we've all seen, he's not that goal scorer that we need. He's got three goals this season. One of them was a penalty. That's not going to get us top four unless he hits a rich vein of form. Uh, Eddie and Ketter is not the answer. We know that. I know I banter him quite a lot, but um, you know he's not the answer to our problem. Now, I've always said for me the one I would go for is Martinelli through the middle. That ability to press, that low centre of gravity, that drive, that ability to beat uh, defenders when he isolates them, and he's definitely got an eye for a goal as well. I know a lot of people have said maybe Nicolas Pepe. Um, has played a more central role when he was at Lille. I'm just not sure this manager, I mean, he doesn't even pick him in his, in his what we would say is his natural position, uh, let alone could I see him, you know, playing him through the middle. Uh, it's something I would potentially try, but for me, Martinelli, I would definitely go for that. And apparently he's been training through the middle as a number nine. That is something I would be in favour of until the end of the season. Maybe you could play him with Lacazette or instead of Lacazette. Now, this weekend, Arsenal play Brentford at home. A fantastic opportunity for us to take advantage of what was a great weekend of football. West Ham dropped points, Tottenham dropped points, Man United dropped points. We need to win our game against Brentford. Brentford have not been in the best of form lately. And I think we owe them one for beating us first game of the season. We had a lot of players missing. You know, Ivan Tony was on smoke talking all kinds of madness. And uh, I think we owe them one. Now, of course, this weekend, Tottenham play against Manchester City. You would expect them to drop points. Manchester United go to Leeds. Although Leeds have not been in great form, it is a derby game. Uh, the Yorkshire-Lancashire rivalry. That'll be a tough game as well. So, Arsenal need to take advantage. But Martinelli is suspended for this game. What does that mean in those wide positions for Arsenal? Do they go Nicolas Pepe and Saka out wide? 
I wouldn't mind seeing that, but I don't think that will happen. I think he will bring Emil Smith-Rowe in on that left-hand side. Smith-Rowe is our top goal scorer this season, has found himself out of the team. At the start of the season, I felt he may have been challenging to get in the 10 role, but um, I think the general feeling is that Odegaard is the 10 and Smith-Rowe is more of a wide player or maybe even a number 8. So... Um, yeah, I, I would expect maybe Smith Rowe to go on that left hand side, but I definitely want to see Pepe get game time, even if it's coming off the bench for 25 minutes. We have to try and utilise Pepe in some way. The guy costs £72 million. Even if Arsenal don't want to keep him, not playing him does not help the value of the player. If he can have a good 10 15 games, maybe you can get 40 million for him. If you don't play him, I think Arsenal would struggle to get 20 25 million for him at this stage due to his high wage and lack of form. Personally, I still think there's a player in Pepe and I think we should try and use him until the end of the season. That is for sure. Um Josh Cronkey did an interview in America on a podcast um, obviously, the Cronkies are, are flying high at the moment. They've just won the Super Bowl. A lot of Arsenal fans saying, what impact will that have on Arsenal? Will we get more money to spend? I'm not sure how much of an influence or impact that will have. But Josh Cronkie gave a quite in-depth um, interview. It was over an hour long, and he spent about 10 to 15 minutes discussing Arsenal. I take it all with a pinch of salt, really, when he talks about Arsenal. The PR at Arsenal is second to none. It's not quite backed up in the same manner. Now, I know some people defend the Cronkies and say, you know, since 2018, since they've had full ownership, they have put, you know, money into the club. They've spent money in terms of transfers. I always have this sort of belief that, listen, they don't put a lot out of their own pocket, as a lot of managers don't get money from the owner's pocket directly. But I think we are in need of more money. We spent $150 million in the summer. And to me, that barely scratched the surface. The six players we signed in the summer were decent, but they haven't, you know, there's nobody there that I believe has taken us to that next level. I think we made smart signings. I think Ramsdale and Tommy Asu in particular were very shrewd. Ben White has certainly done well. Odegaard, we already knew. Um, but I think we need now those top quality players. We need a 50, 60 million pound player that lifts the stadium, that gets fans off their feet. We need that striker. We need that centre midfielder who can boss play. Um, but Josh is saying, look, the club are, are, are planning on going and pushing. They want to get back to the top level. Actions speak louder than words and time will tell. One thing's for certain. I don't think the Cronkies are going anywhere. Daniel Ek came. He's gone quiet. I think that one is not going to happen. Spotify have just pumped loads of money into Barcelona. The proof will be in the pudding um, with the Cronkies if they're really about that life. Um, and, and we'll see what happens, what competition we sort of land in and how much investment is made in the summer. Now, Fabrizio Romano, um, the mouthpiece of transfers, if you like, um, he did an interview after the Super Bowl final the day after. And he said, listen, Arsenal fans, be patient. Um, you're going to sign a big striker this summer, you're going to sign at least one midfielder and you're going to go for it again in the summer. Again, I'm not one to get overly excited about that. I want to see what Arsenal do this season. We are in the middle of a top four race. I'm not going to get excited about potential transfers for next season. Let's look at what we're doing right now. Let's look at where we can finish this season. And before I round up the video, I just want to ask your thoughts. At this moment in time, who would you say are favourites for top four? Who would you say are the favourites to get fourth in the Premier League? I don't like to cap. I say it as I see it. I would still say Manchester United are the favourites based on what we always call individual brilliance. Um, I think in tight games, their additional individual quality will get them out of a mess. Ronaldo will score a winning goal. Rashford might get one. Bruno... Um, I think that at the moment makes them favourites. I would say after Manchester United, probably Arsenal. Um, we've got a decent run of fixtures. We've played a lot of the big six away from home. Just my worry at the moment is the lack of goals in tight games. Is lack is that going to get us out of it? In wide positions, you're relying on youngsters. And Pepe, who is the more experienced winger who scores goals, doesn't get in the team. So at the moment, I would say Manchester United favourites, probably Arsenal second. Let me know what you think. Who would you say are the favourites for top four? Uh, don't forget, 
like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitch link as well. I will be back on stream tomorrow. Uh, we should have press conference reaction over the next couple of days. We're looking ahead to the Brentford game. Back to business. Let's hope Arsenal can get the three points. For anybody who's from Nottingham, by the way, I'm back on my old estate. Um, this is Brewster's Road in St. Anne's. Uh, if you're from Nottingham, you probably know around this area. So uh, back to the roots to record the video, you know. But I'll be back inside the office space tomorrow and um, watching the Champions League. Kylian Mbappe last night, man. Another player that Arsenal nearly signed. Arsene Wenger was in this guy's house trying to convince him to join Arsenal when he was at Monaco. Unfortunately, he rejected the move and went to PSG. What could he have been? He looks like a young Thierry Henry uh, to me. What a player Mbappe is. Big up to everyone for tuning in. Like the video, subscribe, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be back on stream tomorrow, people. Bless.